welcome back. So I'm really excited today to get going on the second of our five part series on network scanners. In the previous lesson, we created a simple ping sweeper and now we'll add to its functionality by incorporating port scanning. So now, once we give it a subnet and a net mask, we should not only receive a list of open IPs, but also a list of open ports associated with each one of those IPs. And another important thing, you probably noticed that the previous script took some time to run, which is obviously not ideal. Additionally, considering that this time we'll also scan 1,023 ports on each open IP, well, things could get really out of hand. So today you'll also learn about multi-threading, which simply takes use of the fact that most of us now have multiple CPU cores. This allows us to run a number of operations concurrently. So now instead of one packet at a time, we can send and receive multiple packets at any given moment. This can help us greatly speed things up and is a very useful optimization technique you can apply in many different areas. So let's just dive into a tiny bit of theory, just enough to enhance our coding experience by providing some valuable context. Last week, we used ICMP echo packets to do our ping sweep. For port scanning, we'll use something called a SYN scan. This simply means that we start a three-way handshake by sending a SYN packet. Then we either get no response, in which case we assume the port is closed, or we receive a SYN ACK response, in which case we assume it is open. And then we intentionally omit sending the expected ACK packet so as not to complete the handshake and thus not connect to the port. We do this so as to minimize noise. All this functionality will again be provided by the Scapy library, which should be clear to you right now is kind of a big deal when using Python for cybersecurity. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Okay, just one final thing before we get coding. Right at the top of the description, you can find links to the actual script. As always, I recommend downloading it so you can focus on the lesson and not on transcription. Enough with the chit chat, let's get to it. So here is the entire script. We begin by importing all the necessary modules. We then define several functions. First, we have a function to ping a single host. Then there is a function to perform a ping sweep across a network. Below this, we have a function to scan a single port. And again, similarly, there is another function used for scanning a range of ports on a single IP. So that's kind of strange. For both a ping and port, we have a function to do a single scan and a range scan. So what's going on here? Well, it'll make more sense once we run through the actual script, but basically this logic helps us implement multi-threading effectively. By using this kind of modular approach, we can create a single scan building block and then use the range functions to run multiple instances of that function to speed things up. Finally, here on the bottom, we have our main function which ties everything together, performing the network scan and presenting the results. Okay, so now that we've looked at the big picture, let's jump in and analyze each line individually. First, we'll import all the required libraries. OS, which gives us access to the CPU cores. And then all the good stuff from Scapy so we can send and receive our packets. We then import IP network from IP address, which helps us with all the operation regarding IP addresses. Below this, we import thread pool executor and as completed from concurrent.futures, which is used for parallel processing. And finally, we'll import lock from threading. And basically this will allow us to print a single progress meter to the screen, even though we have multiple processes running at any given moment. And that's exactly also why we'll declare the variable print lock here using the lock object. It ensures what's known as thread safe printing. So first we'll define our function for a single ping scan. We can see it receives the host IP as argument. And then again, as we saw last week, we use Scapy's SR1 function to send an ICMP echo packet, which in case a response is received, leads to a non-null value for the response, which then in turn triggers the if statement, thereby returning the IP. Below this, we create the ping sweep function, which receives the network and net mask as arguments. We create an empty list to keep track of all the live hosts. And then here we have something new. Here we assign the amount of threads, meaning the amount of tasks we want to run concurrently. You can set it manually to a specific number. Here, however, the script will automatically determine how many CPU cores your system has and then set the amount of threads equal to that. We then once again calculate the range of potential IPs and determine the total amount of potential hosts. Now here you can see we create an instance of thread pool executor, the class which allows us to perform all operations inside of it with multi-threading. And here is simply the action that we want to be performed, which again is using our ping function from above to test every single IP in the host. If it discovers an open host, it will print to screen, and once all the hosts have been pinged, we return the complete list of live hosts back to our main function. 
We now define our scan port function, which is going to act very similar to the ping function insofar as it will scan a single port for us and thus provide modular logic so we can apply multi-threading to it. We can see it receives an IP and port as arguments and then again uses the sr one scp function to send a send packet. The if statement then checks whether the response has a value, in other words, whether a response was received and whether it has the SA flag, meaning here of course whether it has the SYN ACK packet as would be expected. And again if it is open we'll return the port and if not we'll return nothing. Here we define the port scan function which will again be using multi-threading to execute multiple threads of the scan port function we just discussed. We can see here the logic almost exactly follows that of the ping command before. We create a list to keep track of open ports, we set threads equal to the amount of CPU cores and we determine the amount of total ports. And once again we'll create an instance of thread pool executor which will allow us to apply multi-threading to the process of sending each IP and port to the scan port function to, to ultimately determine which ports are open and which are not. Now we define the function get live hosts and port. You can almost think of this as some sort of control center from which we'll run the entire process of discovering open IPs and ports. Here indeed you can see we call the ping sweep function. And then after setting our desired port range, we'll also call the port scan function from within this for loop. Here in the end we'll return host port mapping, which is a list mapping all open IPs to their associated open ports. And finally we have, as is the custom, our main function. Here we'll receive the command line input from the user and save it as variables, where after we'll send this info to the get live hosts and ports function, which sets off the entire cascade and ultimately returns the dictionary of open IPs and ports, which we then iterate through and print to screen. So now that we've covered the script, let's get to the fun bits and test it. Sorry for that, I just need your attention for a second. Please ensure that you have permission to scan any network you intend to. I'm saying this because you could actually get in legit trouble if you don't. So either set up a VLAN or in my case, since I am a happy member of Hack the Box, I'm going to spin up one of their CTF machines, which we'll use to communicate with. And that's all I'll say in the matter. Good. Alright guys, so very similar to the previous script, we'll again run it with sudo e and provide it with a subnet and net mask. And once again we can see the progress is being output to terminal, we can witness short little bursts of progress, that's the multi-threading at work. However, this is still fairly slow and since we'll scan 1023 ports of each discovered host, I'm going to speed this up. And once again we can see that while we're scanning, discovered hosts are printed to terminal and it also prints all open ports it discovers to terminal while it is scanning. And finally, we can see the scan is complete. We can see for our convenience, all the results are printed to the terminal one final time before the script exits. And just like that, in two short lessons, we've not only created a functional and practically useful little IP and port scanner, but we've also learned about multi-threading and how its implementation can affect our code's architecture. In the next video, we'll start a new script, which will receive the output of today's script to provide us with even more information regarding our targets. It's gonna be awesome. I promise. Until then, peace out.